The producers of this video are promoting prescribed fire, the purposeful application of fire under a prescribed set of weather and physical factors to achieve a specific objective. It is important that anyone implementing prescribed fire be knowledgeable of the practices and procedures to safely conduct a prescribed burn. References for additional information on prescribed burning can be found at the end of this video. We always talk about drought in the context of rainfall and being in a drought and how that affects management, how that affects production, how that affects economics, how that affects all aspects of land management and of ranching and everything that we do. Fire is just the same and we are in a fire drought. We have been in a fire drought for decades and we can see the benefits of breaking that fire drought by starting to use prescribed fire on the land. The reason that I burn is because we have such an infestation of brush and mainly cedar trees that we need to control and it improves our grasses along with the control of this brush and cedar trees and feel like it also helps the wildlife and the bobcat quail mainly. Uh, we spent a lot of money over the last 20 years cutting cedars and really didn't seem to be getting anywhere. It just, they kept coming back and uh, we've probably been burning about 15 years now and you can see a dramatic change in our property, not just with Eastern red cedars, but with other invasive species also. Overgrazed, underutilized ranch with cedar trees, and I had to get rid of the cedars so that I could then graze more of the ranch. So it was to readjust the grazing patterns and to get rid of the eastern red cedar. The major thing we wanted to do was to get rid of the eastern cedars that infested the ranch, and then secondly, to improve really uh, our pastures. And through burning, we have uh, seen a real improvement uh, in uh, our, our good grasses, our bunch grasses, our big blue stem, little blue stem, Indian grass, the gamma grasses. If you go uh, 10, 15, 20 years without fire and you have those red cedar seedlings or cedar seedlings in your, in your pastures, then you will see stocking rate decline and eventually performance of your, of your cattle decline. And what seems like just a few trees out scattered out across your pastures doesn't seem like much. Uh, but in a period of say 10, 15 years, uh, you discover just out of the blue that you're having to reduce stocking rate or you're gonna have to feed hay. And uh, that's the result of an insidious cedar encroachment that's robbing you of forage. Later I, discovered that removing the eastern red cedars, I improved the water cycle, which meant that I could grow more forage, which, which in turn allowed me more stocking. We notice in the burns that we get more water availability and we see some of them seeps come out of our hills where we depress the brush and stuff. It's telling us that we're retaining more water instead of the brush taking it all. Three years ago, we had a wildfire on the west side of the ranch and within 10 days, ponds that I hadn't seen full since I was a kid were coming up and they're plumb full now and have been ever since the wildfire. When I started on this ranch in 84, very few canyons had any live water in it. As, and you gotta remember that I had a lot of canopy cover of cedars. So eliminating that canopy cover, getting forage to grow underneath those trees that eventually were either cut down or burnt, I maintained more water to grow more forage. So that then the canyon started in having water in them. Springs started in to flow again. On this particular ranch, uh... Well, I guess we're thankful for our ancestors who were really concerned about water because we've had uh, springs on our ranch that have never gone dry, no matter how, how severe the drought has been. Having said that, uh, 
we have quickly uh, noticed the, an increase in the production of those springs in the removal of, of the cedars. The water table has definitely come up. And we've seen some new springs that were on the ranch years ago that have come back because of the number of eastern cedars that had been removed that were draining them uh, the, and dropping the water table so significantly. So your ponds fill up but they don't fill up by runoff, they fill up by the, the moisture going into the soil and then seeping gradually into the pond. So I think that's another advantage. We feel like that burning gives us more forage available to the cows because everything out there, as far as grass and forbs, they pretty well utilize where they won't on the unburnt pasture. In long haul, we feel like it ups our capacity of grazing a lot. Definitely seeing more forage now. Um, the grass seems to get taller. And uh, last year we had a wildfire go through one half of the ranch. At the end of the summer, the grass that had been burnt was a foot taller next to the grass that hadn't been burnt, and we'd had cattle in there all summer. I would say that we've had to lower our carrying capacity initially and able to have enough grass and able to burn. But now we're starting to see the benefits and we're starting to get maybe more cattle than we ran previous to burning because we're getting more acres of grass and less acres of brush. Through the years of burning, the plant vigor has increased. The spacing between plants has decreased. So I, we grow more forage so we can utilize more forage for cattle productions. The grass that you can put them on, especially the warm season grass that recovers immediately following a fire event, is some of the best grass that you can graze with cattle. One of the big things that we have uh, gained from burning, number one, my dad always calculated about a cow-calf pair for every 15 acres in this area, and that is taking consideration drought. And we have quickly learned that through our prescribed burning and, and, and the wildfire, that our, our carrying capacity on our pastures here uh, have increased considerably. And when I say considerably, you know, we could drop down to probably uh, 10, 11 acres per cow calf. So we can increase the number of animals that we graze here. Numerous studies done mainly looking at stalker cattle. We've got some really good information on stalker cattle. You can see anywhere from 10 to 15 percent increased gain the year of the burn with with stalker cattle in there. So again 10 to 15 percent increased gain that's a that's a pretty good amount of gain for the benefit of that fire and you don't see that benefit with any other management practice that people put on the ground. You don't see increased gains with spraying herbicide. You don't see increased gains with mechanical treatment of anything. You don't see increased gains with mowing. You see it with fire. That's the benefit that fire brings to you with that. As for cow-calf, we're going to increase body condition scores by at least a factor of one or so. So comparing burned versus unburned where cows are grazing on burned areas, we're going to see increased body condition scores of at least one. And then also we're going to see uh, increased weaning weights. I know the weaning weights on the calves uh, that our renter uh, uh, has produced has increased uh, the past two years versus the previous three or four or five years. Just because of the improvement in the quality of grasses that we have and more of it's available. We figure on burnt country versus non-burnt country getting another uh, 50 pounds a gain on a summer grazing program. We seem to get better results on conception and weight and stuff on our calves with the burnt pastures than the pastures that were not burning. My conception rate early on when we didn't have a drought was 95%. So it was very good and I, I was burning on a regular basis. The, uh, the cattle will instantly gravitate to that that has been burned. And the new growth is, is tender, actually pretty darn nutritious, and uh, they will instantly gravitate to that uh, and prefer that, that new growing grass compared to the older grass that may be a year, two or three years since it's been burned. Every bite that's 
taken by livestock on burned pasture is you know 100% fresh new growth high quality and yes it does increase the nutritive values of it by again recycling a lot of the nutrients that go back in you know P and K phosphorus potassium ash potash goes back into the soil gets recycled so again we're recycling putting more nutritive value back into those plants we've done studies where we again compared burned versus unburned and the nutritive value of unburned pastures will run anywhere from five to eight percent crude protein if you burn to a spring burn you're going to start out with 16 18 percent crude protein on those same forages making it better quality more palatability but also we're increasing the nutrient value by recycling of nutrients oh there's no comparison the way the cattle will uh, graze burnt country versus non-burnt country they'll really camp out on the burnt stuff it is definitely a better grazing we utilize our burnt pastures in the fall and winter because we feel like it's a higher quality forage in the winter time than our pastures that haven't been burnt to help us get through the winters better and and it lets our grass get some maturity and reseed itself and and be ready for the next year if we burn three pastures we might rotate a set of cows through them every you know move them every 30 days depending on the pasture size just to uh, make sure that they get grown back and and get a good stand of grass back before fall on the ranch we do a lot of managed intensive grazing generally what we have done in the past is burn a cell a complete cell so that cell is is all burnt and we graze that as a, as a unit the other two cells on the ranch usually don't get burnt the same year certainly we have found that uh, you know if you do that on a rotational basis uh, you can improve your pasture and the cattle are still gaining very well and the calves especially on, on that new growth we found that if you reintroduce fire you begin to increase your biodiversity and increasing your biodiversity has a secondary benefit to soil health. As soil health increases, your water infiltration rate and your water cycling also increases. So your rainfall that falls on your grass is more effective. Another real value to prescribed burning for a rancher is its, its use for redistributing cattle grazing across a pasture. And in essence, it's a kind or a form of, of resting portion of your pasture and uh, works very effectively, more effectively, in fact, than any other tool, aside from perhaps changing your water distribution. But set, certainly more effective than, say, salt or mineral or feeding different areas of the pasture. Uh, it just uh, redistributes cattle grazing across your pasture. Fire has been shown to reduce the amount of ticks on livestock that are grazing in burned areas versus unburned areas. Also, the same thing's been shown with face flies and horn flies, whereas reduced the number of face flies and horn flies per animal compared on burned areas compared to those in adjacent unburned areas. Uh, significantly enough to where in the burned areas, the fly numbers were reduced enough that there was no need for any kind of ear tag spray or anything like that. It makes a big difference on gathering your pastures, not having all those cedars. It takes less help and uh, the cattle don't seem to get as wild in pastures that aren't overrun with brush. One reason why ranchers should consider burning, in fact, consider burning with a group of ranchers, an entire large area, is to develop fire resistant landscapes. You know, we've had in the southern Great Plains, especially the western portion of that, a number of years since uh, 2007 of, of large wildfires. And those have occurred both in the winter and in the, and the summer. And they're large, uh, some historic size fires. I'll go so far to say that our research indicates there's no reason for you to suffer as a rancher, your, your ranch burning in a wildfire, an unintended fire. 
because you can use fire to keep that from happening. Now, it's not you by yourself, but it's you and a community of ranchers who fireproof your landscape. That's fireproof your landscape. And you simply do that by creating fire breaks with fire. And in fact, fire combined with grazing. Kind of a rule of thumb is, in fact, if you have 39% of your landscape, that's multiple ranches put together, 39% of the landscape that will not burn, fire will not carry across that landscape. So you do that through burning, but also through grazing after burning. Prescribed fire is just another tool in a manager's toolbox along with mechanical control. Mechanical control of invasive species, namely Eastern Red Cedar, can be fairly inexpensive in a neighborhood of $150 an acre um, where the trees are small and it's easy cutting relatively flat and level ground. Um, it can range up to $1,500 to almost $2,000 an acre when you start looking at some of the very steep and deep canyons that we have here in the Red Hills. So mechanical cedar tree clearing and invasive species removal, it's an incredible cost. Uh, it's the most expensive way to try to restore your land. By comparison, prescribed fire is very cheap and extremely effective at reducing some of those invasive species and their canopy covers. You know, if you build a really good fire guard, they're pretty easy to maintain and they can last a lifetime where you go in and cut all the trees in five years, you've got another problem. I mean, you've got more trees to cut. So it's a lot cheaper long term to build a fire guard and burn than it is to mechanically remove them. I really do think that people need to get the idea out of their head that they're going to get out and cut these cedars. You can cut cedars. We did it for a long time on a small tract of land and, and get by with it. But once you start managing large tracts of land, it is impossible to cut. I mean, we would spend $30,000 every year cutting cedar trees if we weren't burning out here. We need to maybe change our focus on instead of buying a skid steer and a tree saw to maybe buy a couple fire skids and, and actually you'd save a lot of money that you can buy a lot of fire equipment for what a, a saw and a skid steer cost. The thing with, with prescribed burning and grazing management is we've been able to run more cattle through the ranch, which increases the bottom line significantly. How expensive is prescribed fire? You can't afford not to do it. You can't afford not to do it. Four major issues that most landowners have about using fire on their land. Number one is liability. The next thing people have is just that lack of knowledge or lack of experience with fire. And then comes in the lack of equipment, to, to, they feel that they need more equipment to safely conduct, safely handle the fire, and then also comes in the question of labor, having enough people to help them. So how do you address those four issues? Probably one of the best ways that we found that we work with, and it's, it's proven, is through a prescribed burn association or through a prescribed burn cooperative. And what a prescribed burn association is, is where a group of landowners in an area, can be a region, a county, can be a watershed area, can be a region or multiple county area, get together, they pool their resources, they pool their equipment, they pool their labor to get together to help each other burn. The more people we get involved with that fire, the less risk becomes involved because number one is you have neighbor helping neighbor burn. You get together with your neighbor and say, hey, I want to burn my place. How about we burn yours because I can use this road over here as a fire break. We can go to the road over on your place. It doesn't cost that much. We keep expenses down because we don't have to build fire breaks. And then we also don't have to worry about liability because we're allowing fire to go from one neighbor to the other neighbor. Get together with a group of landowners, consult with County Extension, NRCS, some of your wildlife uh, agencies have information about prescribed burn associations. We have prescribed burn associations in seven states across the U.S. right now, with over 60 burn associations that are around. So again, there may be one already near you or one that's already developed. If you have any problems on your ranch at all with uh, cedar, encroachment, then fire necessarily has to be a part of your operation. It is the best management practice. 
It's number one. It's the first practice you should turn to. Any other way to deal with red cedar is only short-term effective. Over the years of what I've seen with fire and what I've come to understand about the importance and the need of fire is that fire is not a tool. Fire can be used as a tool, but fire is not a tool. Fire is part of the ecosystem process and it is just as important as rainfall on the land. One day a fire can do 15 years of range management. 20 years. If you can hit that country up north with another fire in 8 to 10 years, it'll look just like God made it. 